If you are curious to know what an overload relay is, what an overload relay consists of, how an overload relay is coupled into a contactor to protect the motor, what differences it has with a circuit breaker, and how to test an overload relay to check if it is functioning, watch this video until the end. When a motor is running under a load, it draws current from the network, thus creating heat, which usually this heat accumulation is innocuous. If a motor draws too much current and generates too much heat, it indicates running in overload. Once a motor runs in overload for an extended period, the extreme heat might destroy a motor's delicate functional components. So, to protect products in industrial automation, an overload relay is used to attach to a contactor to prevent motors from operating in overload. An overload relay is a sensory safety device. It permits a harmless momentary overload such as the inrush current that occurs when a motor starts and it protects an electrical motor against continuous excessive current draw ensuring the motor does not overheat. But how does it provide protection? Once the overload relay detects an ongoing overload condition for a considerable time, it will trip and send feedback to the contactor so the contactor breaks up the current flow and stops the motor. You may wonder what causes a motor to overload. Well, certain conditions result in overloading, such as when a rotor gets jammed and there is a mechanical obstruction, when the process of aligning shafts with each other is not properly executed, when one of the phases of a free phase AC system has failed, when a motor is being started and stopped frequently during an event, when the ambient temperature is high and there is inadequate ventilation. When a motor is undersized to handle a load which causes additional stress on a motor, and when bearings responsible for supporting the shaft inside the motor have been damaged. Now let us talk about components that are common in overload relays. First, there is the adjustable current setting. By using this dial, you can specify the amount of current the motor must draw to be considered overloaded. In other words, the motor's rated FLA or full load amps can be set here. Secondly, there are two built-in auxiliary contacts. A pair numbered 95 to 96 is normally closed, whereas a pair numbered 97 to 98 is normally open. Once an overload condition happens, the internal NC and NO switches become open and closed respectively. Next, there is the reset button. This design allows you to toggle between manual and automatic reset modes and functions as the reset button. Imagine a tripped overload relay in which its reset mode is automatic. After an overloading problem has been handled, the overload relay will reset itself automatically. This time, consider the overload relay is tripped while its reset mode was set to manual. When an overloading issue is resolved, the overload needs manual confirmation to be reset by hitting the reset button. The test strip button also exists on the face of the overload relay. It may be utilized to simulate a trip of the overload relay to check if the overload relay is working correctly. And finally, there is a trip indicator which provides the status of the overload relay visually, meaning when an overload condition happens, this indicator turns on. To avoid confusing an overload relay with a circuit breaker, let us review their main differences quickly. Using a circuit breaker, you can protect a motor from sudden high current events caused by a short circuit. If this created heavy current keeps flowing through the circuit, it can damage the motor immediately. So in the event of a short circuit, the circuit breaker will open instantaneously and cut the power. On the other side, an overload relay protects a motor from the excessive current being drawn from the supply. This current might harm a motor by gradually deteriorating the winding insulation. So, due to the inverse trip time characteristic of an overload relay, once an overload condition occurs, the overload relay will trip after the predetermined time delay based on its trip class. Also, once an overload relay is tripped, it doesn't shut off the power itself. An overload relay sends feedback to the contactor, so the contactor is the one that interrupts the electricity flow. An overload relay cannot be used to operate a motor on its own, so you need to pair it with a contactor. Typically, an overload relay is positioned beneath a contactor, often having three prongs extend outside its housing coupled into the contactor load side terminals. The union of these two components working together is called a motor starter. Commonly, an overload relay is used in conjunction with a contactor to control the functioning of a motor.
The overload relay is the motor protection's beating heart that provides overload protection. While through the contactor, a motor's current delivery can be interrupted or established. Let's look at this from the schematic perspective to understand how an overload relay operates in a motor circuit. A three-phase power circuit and a basic start-stop control circuit are shown here. Also, the overload relay is presented in these two circuits. Typically, two symbols are used in wiring diagrams for overload relays. The overload relay schematic symbol in the NEMA standard looks like two opposing question marks for each phase, while in the IEC standard, it looks like a digital pulse for each phase. Here we use NEMA schematic symbols to represent the overload relay and other components. The free phase power supply is linked to the contactor's input to turn on the system and the relay's output is connected to the motor. You can use the overload relay's normally closed or normally open contacts to manage the function of the contactor's coil. We will make use of the normally closed contact in the control circuit. The moment you press the start button, the contactor's coil energizes, causing the related contacts to be closed in the power circuit, allowing current to be sent to the motor through the overload relay. If the motor is working in a normal situation and there isn't any overload, the normally closed auxiliary contact of the overload relay stays closed. But when an overload relay detects a state of continual overload, the normally closed contact opens, causing the contactor's coil to be de-energized, leading the primary contact to open up in the power circuit and turn off the motor. Finally, let's test the overload relay using a multimeter set to the continuity beeper. Please note the overload relay is in the deactivated state. It's vital to have continuity between L1 and T1, L2 and T2, and L3 and T3 on the overload relay all the time. Also, when the overload relay is in an on-trip situation, the normally open contact number 97 and 98 should be open, and the normally closed contact number 95 to 96 should stay closed. Now, by pressing the test button, let's test the overload relay in a trip situation. The connections between L1 to T1, L2 to T2, and L3 to T3 still exist. When an overload relay trips, the free phase overload relay elements do not cut off power to the motor. When you place the multimeter probes to the auxiliary normally closed contact, you figure it is open. And when you place the probes to the auxiliary normally open contact, you find it closed, meaning it has continuity. Stay tuned for the upcoming video where overload relay types and overload relay trip class will be explained. Don't forget to share your opinion about this video in the comment section. Also, please encourage us by liking the video, subscribing to our channel, and pressing the bell icon so you can get notifications whenever we publish new out-of-the-oven videos. This way, you keep motivating us to produce more informative videos.